Cool. So we're preparing to live stream, but for those of our buddies just join in, um, we'll get started in about 30 seconds or so. Let us know in the chat, what did you eat today or plan on eating later today? Having a smoothie right now. Nice. Let us know in the chat what are your favorite smoothies. So we're preparing to live stream. Awesome. We are back. Hi, buddies. Thank you all so much for coming on this lovely Wednesday afternoon or Thursday morning. We're super excited to have Min Jun back on today discuss present about practical techniques to level up your portfolio presentation and if this is your first design buddies events welcome i'll be sharing really brief quick slides and we'll hop right into it and so i'm grace i founded design buddies um, just for fun two years ago and today we're almost at we're, we're over forty thousand members now and our goal is to help y'all level up your design career and make lifelong friends so we provide a lot of resources um, like events um, and a lot of fun design challenges and all these fun goodies, all free for y'all to use and meet your design, your buddies and design. And just a couple of house rules, events are recorded. So you'll be able to find um, the recording and on a YouTube channel, just search design buddies. And feel free to engage in the chat. You're welcome to say anything you want um, as long as it's, it's not offending anyone. Um, but if anything uh, Mean Ju says or anything anyone else says, well, feel free to comment in the chat as well. It's meant for you to just chat. Um, but please keep all promotional links in the networking sheet and connect with each other. We really want y'all buddies to make friends with each other, become lifelong buddies in design, send each other a personalized LinkedIn requests saying that y'all met at this event, become buddies for life. Um, and then during this event, we'll also have some questions. Instead of submitting on Zoom, please submit an upvote on Slido so we can make sure we get all your questions and have them all in one place. Towards the end, we'll like to take a group selfie, so feel free to grab any object you want to be in the photo. We have some Zoom backgrounds. If something resonates with you, feel free to share them on social media. Connect with buddies, hop into our Discord. We're the largest design community in the world. And have fun and be respectful, but we're just mostly have fun. Um, and with that, we'll, ha we'll hand it over to me, June. Oh. oh, your mic is on mute. Oh yeah, I can. Yeah, I can speak right now. So let me share my screen, and we can start with this talk. Oh, can everyone see my uh, keynote screen here? Cool. So um, thanks everyone to come in today, and uh, I hope you have a peaceful like morning, evening, or afternoon. So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Minjun, and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, oh. all this. We can't see your screen. Okay. Let me I can um, let me see. Wait a sec. Um can you see my screen right now? Yes. Okay. So and I scrolling down into this page. Can you see the next slide? Yeah. Okay, cool. So today I want to talk about like portfolio presentation. Uh, what is the practical technique uh, we can leverage immediately to level up your next presentation? Because I'm really passionate about helping people uh, improve their portfolio presentation. And through my own journey, I done a lot of portfolio presentation during my job hunting. And before we get started, I want to say like all opinion I'm going to share out during these presentations are my personal uh, opinion, and they are not representative uh, of any of my employer. So which means it will be a very honest conversation I have, and I will going to share all my lessons and learning uh, from my past experience and from my experience as a mentor to help other uh, designers improve their portfolio presentation. So here is a brief agenda for these talks. Uh, I always start with my journey, and then I will talk about like what is a portfolio presentation uh, criteria as the hiring manager or the interviewer they are looking for from your portfolio presentation. And then there are some like 
principle for the storytelling and what is the design principle as well for designing your presentation. And the other and the last thing I will talk about some secret sauce, the tips and advice uh, to help you prepare for your portfolio presentation. And at the end, we, we will have like 10 or 15 minutes left for any question you have uh, from the chat. So uh, let's start with my journey. Um, when I was a little girl, I always loved like drawing and always think about maybe I can become a painter or a designer in the future. However, my younger self didn't know that it is, it is a tough journey. So to reach this goal to becoming a product designer, I actually ended up with studying three different majors for a long time. So at college, I studied Chinese literature and language, which is nothing related to the design. And then I went to UPenn to get my first master, master degree in learning science and technology. Uh, I also took a lot of design class as my elective so I can build up my portfolio to apply for this HCI school in the state. So luckily I got my second master degree from uh, human computer intelligent design program at UW Seattle. So finally, after like a couple of years I study and the transition between different major, I finally graduated from the school and start my career um, as a UX or product designer. So uh, I think the the first uh, the first ever job I got was I'm I was a product designer at Wayfair. Um, I learned so many things from my Wayfair warehousing team, where I was designing at the intersection between physical and digital world. So I was working on this product to help our warehouse associate warehouse people do their job safety and efficiently. And then I got the opportunity to working on larger company like Amazon, where I was a UX designer on the Amazon Prime team. So I was a designer designing the end-to-end -end customer experience to help our global Prime member understand our benefit as well as engage with our membership. So after a years of uh, my time at Amazon, I moved to Microsoft. Uh, and I'm currently a UX designer at Microsoft working on the multimedia search on Bing. So basically like if you search any video and image on the Bing, uh, this is pretty much like my team is working on. And outside my daily job, I really love like food and always looking for like authentic local coffee shop whenever like uh, what, uh, when I traveling to any city or country. So this is my brief introduction. Let's jump into the midi part of our presentation. So a lot of people, they will ask me the question is, what are they looking for? What are the hiring manager or the interviewer they are looking for during this like 45 to six mini presentation? So for the portfolio presentation, you the format will be, it might, it might be in the 101 session you have with the hiring manager to go through one to three project, or it will be in the one-on-one you have with the senior UX product designer on the team. Uh, so depending on the format, but sometimes, especially during the on-site interview, you will definitely have the group presentation, group portfolio presentation with a list of the teammate here, including the high manager, UX designer. And sometimes depending on the team, you are interviewing you, you are interviewing with sometimes the PM engineer or UX researcher or any other content strategy, they will join the portfolio presentation and listening to your project as well. So definitely um, I want to say checking with you a recruiter about what to expect, what who will be joining uh, this portfolio representation to review your project. So, so, so I think this, the other question is uh, how do they evaluate my portfolio presentation? I think no matter what type of company, a startup like Unicorn to the larger tech company you are interviewing with. I think most of the people, they have a very, very standard-like criteria. So they are looking for the product design skill set from you as a 
UX or product designer. The product design skill set include the hard skill as well as the soft skill. And let's jump into the hard skill. So for, from the hard skill, they're always looking for like your visual design, intention design, product thinking, and additionally, like you user research or uh, UX research, uh, user with testing or user interview. And from the soft skill side, they're also looking for like communication, collaboration, uh, how did you, how do you drive the process, the project? And do you have a, any self-awareness as a designer, knowing about your strength, weakness, and opportunity areas? And usually it's like no matter it's like 45 to an hour long portfolio presentation, they always ask you to present at least one to three projects. And so double check with your recruiter about how many projects you should prepare. And by selecting one to three projects during this portfolio presentation, it is very important for you to, sh to show a variety of the product design skill set, the hard skill and the soft skill I mentioned earlier. And at the same time, you also need to show your craft and point of view. How did you justify your design rationale and then make a decision and align with the team? And again, the portfolio presentation is a performance is a show that's not a link. So everything you, you're going to talk about is not a linear process. It's a journey with up and down. So I think here you, you is come up to our next topic, like what is the storytelling? What kind of rule I can apply to my next portfolio presentation to, to craft my own story for my portfolio presentation? So that is the most important parts of our presentation, uh, our talk today. Um, I think so. It's different from the storytelling principle you learn for the animation or movie. Even sometimes it's overlap is overlapping. So what I'm going to share here is more about the storytelling technique we can di directly apply to our portfolio presentation during a job interview. So the first, first rule I always say is always start with the overview. So what does the overview means here is you need to have a slide in the beginning, talk about what is your role, what is your responsibility, what, how, how is your team structure, and what is the overall timeline. Sometimes you might also add in some key outcome or results on this first page. So this is the, the first rule always start with the overview before you dive deep into any detail. And the second rule is remember that you are the main character uh, during these journeys. So what I mean here is by applying this rule into your portfolio patients, you need to use I more than we in, during, your, during your overall presentation. Um, so what I mean here is Sometimes, uh, usually most of our projects, they are group projects. However, talk about and identify the part you are working directly or you have the contribution. That is the key. I see a lot of candidates, they talk, they always using like, we did, we do, we did, blah, blah. And then we land on blah, blah, solution. It will cause a lot of confusion to the hiring manager because they didn't know like, what did you do during this process? So by the end of your portfolio presentation, they ask you a question. Okay, Minjin, what did you do during this project? So make sure that you call out the part you have the most contribute, contribution, you, you make most contribution. And also during your design process, always show you show and call out your design iteration and artifact. If you design a list of uh, the mobile prototype to show the motion, definitely show it and talk about your rationale. And during the process, not only you can show the specific artifact I create, I design, but also you can show any other action I did to help my team move forward with the process to reach the ideal goal. Maybe there's some like team problem, a team collaboration problems you solve, you solve during this process. So you can talk about it using, I, I help the team 
by improving their communication format. So you can talk about your action and methods. And the third rule is remember that this is the portfolio presentation. It is a performance. You are the hero. You are the key hero to overcome the challenge and obstacle, and then then on the result. So by applying the third rule, you are the hero to overcome the challenge and obstacle. The first thing you need to do after you give the overview about your overall case study, then you need to talk about, you need to define the problem. The problem here could be the user problem or the business problems. At the same time, give a very high level overview about what kind of user research activity you did during the discovery phase to help you figure out, to help your team discover the key user problem and pain point. And so, which means, and also uh, talk about how solving this problem will benefit the user and, be, and benefit the user and the overall business. So talking about the why, why solving this problem is important um, is something you should be talking about and consider uh, when you are applying the third rule. The other thing is by talking about like, the user problem and business problems, then we will be focusing on the challenge. What kind of challenge you face during your design process. So how did you, so the challenge could be like how did you balance the user needs, business constraints, business requirement and technical constraint and any other challenge you are facing beyond the design iteration process. Maybe it could be in a challenge coming from working with a remote team, working with a product manager who never worked with the design designer before. So all these things could be the challenge and obstacle. And then by talking about, by introducing the challenge, the next thing you should do is to talk about as a hero, as a main character, how did you overcome this challenge during the process? So there's a few of uh, the bullet points here. I might encourage you to think about um, some key action when you are working through this project. So what action did you take at that moment to solve this challenge? And how did you iterate based on these different feedback you got from the team, you got from the user? And what is your design rationale? I think like always having your design rationales uh, at, at the table and always be prepared. And sometimes you have to walk through and dive deep into the detail about the rationale uh, you, you have for making this type of design decision. And then like always focusing on the how, like how did you land on the final solution? Then just talking about what solution I did. So the how, the process is way more important than the final result. And the 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 other, so by talk, by knowing about like we are the hero, we are the main character to overcome the challenge and obstacle during this process. The other uh, point I want you to think about is what is your superpower and the strength you want to showcase when you talk about when you talk about the journey of overcoming the challenge. So show what you are really great at, really good at during this journey is also really important. So I think this also going back to our first session about what kind of criteria they are looking for when I'm thinking about uh, what I'm good at, what I need to show during this journey. So it will be coming, going back to the half skill and soft skill part. So what I mean here is when you are choosing the challenge or talk about the, a story and solution, remember, always uh, ask yourself, what kind of skill set I want to showcase, I want to communicate by talking about this story, by talking about this journey. So for the hard skill set, obviously we can show visual design, intention design, product thinking, user research. And for the soft skill, we can also talk about collaboration, communication, self awareness, and the drive. How did you drive the process and then on the result? And yeah, and the other thing, uh, the other, so the other thing I always pose the question here is uh, by applying this, 
rules always think about like what is your superpower, what is your domain knowledge, what is your expertise, and what is your strength. What I mean here is there is some actual stuff you can show showcase during this process, then the hard skill or the soft skill I talk about in a more in, in a high level format. So for the uh, superpower. Uh, you might have maybe it could be something I designed for different platform and device across maybe TV, desktop, like iPad and mobile. Or if you do something focusing on accessibility and inclusive design, you can mention it during the process. Or you are really great at using the like Figma or other tool to do the mobile prototyping. And how did you design for the global user and also balance the need for the local user? Uh, globalization and localization is also a big topic for consumer facing product. And maybe you are the designer who really passionate about the UI, uh, talking about the design system, working with design system, contributing to the design system will be your superpower. And there are much more things than what I this all here. So always ask you so about what is my superpower that I can uh, identify and showcase that help me uh, uh, help me stand out from other candidate. And the other rule for the storytelling is always finish finish your story with the outcome, um, because. Like, like I mentioned earlier, you talk about like the problem, you talk about challenge, and then you uh, work through how did you overcome the challenge. At the end, we always need to talk about and finalize the story with a good ending. Uh, so the outcome could be a multiple, uh, multiple like perspective. It could be like the business outcome, how this project drive the how this project drive the revenue, like increase like maybe fifteen percent user retention, this kind of very business focused metric, and you can also think about what did you do to improve the overall like team collaboration, remote collaboration process, or if you are a student and you are working on a student project and you don't have any business success outcome. You can think about like what kind of positive user feedback you had coming from uh, your user testing for your final design. You can leverage all these user feedback as you outcomes as well. And the other thing is beyond this positive like user feedback and success uh, success business outcome. You can also think about your personal outcome. What is your key learning? What is your key takeaway after you complete this project? And it could be everything, like it could be like the you learning for remote collaboration, you learning for designing for a larger group of audience or designing for accessibility. It could be everything you learn from this process. And the other thing you can also think about and include as your outcome is your self-reflection, self-awareness, what could be done better next time if you are given more resource and time. And the last two rule I want to highlight here for the storytelling, uh, the, last, the, the, the one is three is a, magical, uh, is a magical number. So what I mean here is if you are struggling with how to make your story concise, uh, always think about the number three, like how could I use three sentence to describe the project background, project content to describe the user problem, especially if you are a designer working on the enterprise product. So always using like three sentence or three words to describe your domain. You need to simplify the language. And during the process, during your design process, think about the three story, three challenge. Um, how do you showcase a, a variety of your product design skill set through these three challenge or the three story? The other thing is if you are working on a variety of the iteration during this process, you don't have to dive deep into every detail, like every iteration ID. You just need to uh, pull up the most important three iteration and talk about why, why did I make this design decision? for these three iteration. And again, like if you are having a lot of like solution, maybe you just need to 
uh, focusing on the three solution and how did you land on the three solution than the other? And every of the story or every portfolio presentation case study you are going to showcase, think about like how many skill I going to communicate from each project. I would like to say like, especially for the portfolio presentation, we are going to present one, two, three projects. So always at least for, for one project, you need to show three skill you are really good, good at. And the second project, you can show another three skill you are really great, great at. So in the overall, you can show a package of your product design skills that you have as a well-rounded product designer. Uh, and the last rule for storytelling is I always want to say, like the interviewer, the head manager, we are all humans and human love story, but the story should be interesting, focused and simplified. I think that is the most challenging part for you uh, during the process, how, especially for the designer working for the enterprise field, how could, how could you humanize the language and using the most simple language to describe the complicated workflow, it is a skill that we need to have as a designer, not just for the interview, but also for our job. So um, I think this comes with a lot of iterations and you need to share your performance and share your story with, with your mentor, with your peer for feedback. So this is the second session for what the seven rules of the storytelling technique you can apply for your next presentation. And then let's jump into another one, uh, my summary for an A rule of the presentation design. I think this is the part a lot of, a lot of designer, they, they, they don't really care about when they are preparing for any presentation, especially I often hear a question coming from the enterprise designer, like my current, the design system at my current company is not visually appealing. So how could I showcase my visual design skill set during my portfolio presentation? So I think if you want to showcase your visual design skill set, designing your presentation slide is the most efficient way to showcase your visual design skill. So here are some eight rules. I think it's very easier for all of you to apply and to design and craft our presentation. The first one is, I always say uh, less, using less text uh, and using more visual into your slide. Um, especially when we are introducing the context of your project, or if I'm talking about the user problem, a lot of designer I have ever seen on their portfolio presentation, they put all of the description, a longer paragraph on the on one slide. And I always say like, what if we just using one sentence or just a few of the keywords to describe the user problem or uh, any information you want to showcase. So always reduce the text on your slide because you need to allow the audience to focus in on your presentation, how you craft the story, how you talk about the story is way more important than reading the text on the screen and introduce more visual to help people, to help people uh, understand like the project better and having more and designing for a more immersive presentation um, for your audience. And the other rule is also a visual design principle. Uh, in one single slide or in the overall presentation, definitely use uh, less than three like font types. I think sometimes I see uh, different uh, typography, like more than three different, more than three typography in one single screen, it will distract the user audience attention and makes the overall design much more noise than than before. Um, and the other principle I want to say here is use, uh, think about what kind of label, think about the annotation uh, with, think about what kind of annotation I can add into each mockup to help user understand what I'm talking about. So um, what I mean here is um, if you have a lot of iteration, like iteration, first iteration, second iteration, third iteration, I see a lot of candidates, they just post post a, 
they just copy the screen on the on one single slide without adding the label about iteration one, iteration second, iteration three, which makes the audience very confused about like it is one iteration from from a flow from a single flow or it is multiple iteration uh, in different stage of your design process. So always using this keyword, the simple uh, keyword to, uh, to, to highlight uh, what the artifact it is using the label, label or annotation. Um, the other thing is, um, especially for an hour long, um, presentation is pretty long. Sometimes you can add a little bit pause or add, think about some sort of humors you can uh, bring into uh, the presentation. So I, so for me, that oh, I, for to apply this rule, I always love to using um, the illustration I draw or any emoji or any interesting like gif. I can give the user a little bit a moment of relax and humor during an hour long presentation. So I think sometimes think about what kind of illustration, emoji, or GIF you can bring into the presentation to uh, to rise your personal like branding or just bring it a bring a little bit fun into the presentation is also good, especially for this kind of remote interview. And the other things I want to say is don't show three animate mockup at the same time especially during the iteration process. I saw some people, they post like three or four like interactive mockup, interactive GIF on one single slide. And as a, as a interviewer, I didn't know where I should, where my eyes should be focusing on. So it is pretty annoying for the interviewer uh, too. So think, and it's, it's also really hard for you to describe the specific like design detail with rationale using the animate markup. So think about like when is the right time for you to use the animate markup to show your prototyping skill is also a key. So what I always do here is during my design process, especially I need to pause, I need to take a moment to describe my design rationale. I always using very high fidelity, high resolution and clear markup to talk about my design iteration process and rationale. I'm not using a lot of um, animate markup at that time because I want to dive deep into a specific maybe how I want to talk about how did I iterate on this checkout button or this filter, I need to give user focus on that specific filter or any specific information hierarchy on one single screen. So I use large high fidelity, high resolution mockup to help user understand what I'm going to talk about, what design decision I made with rationale. And the other last thing I feel like a lot of designers forget for their presentation design is be, please design your first cover page. I think that is especially, this one is very important during our remote portfolio presentation. So imagine that uh, during your on-site interview, there are a team of maybe six or seven designer plus one hiring manager and other join the meeting room. So most of the people, they will join the room within less the first three to five minutes. So during this time, you will always be asked to share your screen. So making a great impressions uh, through your first cover page is very important. So think about what kind of visual, what kind of label you need to put on your first cover page is also very important. It's also a design of your presentation, design of your journey as well. And the last, uh, session I want to talk about is uh, what is the secret source for me to mm, do a great portfolio presentation during my interview. I think one, the first thing, the most important thing is practice, practice, practice. I think none of us could do a great portfolio presentation without the practicing, especially if you are working in a larger scope project, it's, it's better for you to have a first try of your presentation slide ready. And then you can share with your friend, share with your mentor for feedback. 
and always iterate based on these people feedback and practice um, practice for your portfolio presentation. And next thing is always check your camera and audio uh, before you're going into an interview session, uh, especially in the audio. Sometimes I, I sometimes the candidate's background noise is super loud. It's hard for uh, our team to really hear like what is going on when they are working through the project. So double check with these two, uh, and also double check uh, with the portfolio presentation slide when you are showing the screen, because sometimes like Keynote or Figma, they might be annoying when sharing the screen on different tools like Zoom, like Team or Google Meet. So double check through different platform. And again, like always be like smile during the entire process, even you feel very stressed. But I think these kind of uh, like some smiley moments can help you release the stress and also make and also let the interviewer know, oh, okay, this designer he or she is very excited about uh, talking through her portfolio presentation and she's very passionate about the design. And the other thing I want to say is always prepare an agenda at the beginning and talk about like what you are going to talk about with the interviewer. Especially I see a lot of designers make a mistake. They directly jump into the project without having agenda, without talking about, without showing about the team and what they are going to expect during an hour long presentation. They just directly jump into the portfolio case study. And then like, as well, this one is a little bit hard, um, especially for the remote interview, but make sure that you're always looking at the camera, the, the laptop camera and make the eye contact with the interviewer. Uh, one small tip I want to say here is when you are practicing the presentation on your own, you can uh, have one like, sticky note and put it on the cameras or on your laptop camera and looking at the sticky note uh, the signal become the high manager, like the face of the high manager. So you will be more naturally to looking at on the screen and making the eyes contact during your portfolio presentation. And last thing is, um, because you already prepare so many things and practice thousands of time, the last thing is uh, be confident during every of your portfolio presentation because no one in the room know better about the design than you. You should be confident about your portfolio presentation. And yes, yeah, so before we go into the q and session, I want to say thank you so much again for everyone joining. And if you are curious about other portfolio presentation advice, please check this uh, past event, like how to design Stila portfolio presentation on the Design Body YouTube channel. And thank you so much for all of your listening. Uh, I hope you can get some key takeaway for your next portfolio presentation so we can jump into the Q&A session right now. Yeah, thank you so much. That was amazing. And definitely check out Minjun's other um, presentation with us on YouTube. It's actually our most viewed video on a YouTube channel. So yeah. raise your head of design ways. It's up on front. So make sure to check that out as well. And also shout out to Perry and Catherine and everyone else for helping answer our buddies' questions in the chat. Um, we've collected some questions on Slido that have been uploaded, so I'll be going into, we have 19 questions on Slido so far, so we'll try to get through as, as much as we can. Um, and yeah, let's hop right into it. And after that, we'll take a group photo, so feel free okay. to prepare for that as well. Um, yeah, so first question from Shi Chao is, do you have any suggestions about how to level up as a product des designer? For example, how would a portfolio presentation differ between a senior versus junior designer? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think that's a great question. So based on my personal experience, uh, there are a couple things uh, they will be, they are going to looking at. One is the scope of the work because usually the senior designer, they are going to working on larger scope of project. So usually like for your first project you are going to show, if you are a senior designer, definitely showcase the larger scope of project you have been working with. And the second is the scope of inference, because I think as, as a junior designer, they are more likely like working uh, with another senior designer on a team and they might 
more working on the design execution part, which means you might give them a small design text, maybe iterate on a model or any like small, like little part of the entire feature. However, as a senior designer, for the scope of the inference, not only you will inference the junior designer or mentor the junior designer or, or the mid-level mid designer on the team, but also you will inference the cross-functional team as well. Like how did you drive the conversation with the PM engineer and how did you get alignment with the cross-functional team? And especially as some larger, larger tech company, not only you are going to work with the people get alignment with these cross-functional folks on your team, but also you need to uh, work with other product in outside your outside your organization. So your the level of the inference will be much larger than the junior designer. And the third thing is, I'm sure that as a senior designer, they are pretty confident and comfortable with presentation. Uh, and talk about like the solution and the problem space in a concise and interesting way. So great presentation is also another key criteria. They want to evaluate between junior versus the senior designer. Yeah, but again, I, I think the essential part is the work you have been, you have been working with in your current company or in your past, past company doing the scope, larger scope of war, doing the complicated work is the key criteria to evaluate whether this candidate is a senior or not senior uh, designer or not. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Love the detail. Definitely cross-functional collaboration, learn some business, learning what tech stacks engineers use will, will help you also along collaborating with your cross. I like to help cross-functional buddies um, along the way as well. <laughs> I, I say this at work as well. <laughs> yeah, so our next question um, from Anonymous is, how should we present differently for one-on-one -on -one hiring manager versus on-site? Wait, sorry, let me say that again. How should we present differently for one-on-one -on -one hiring manager versus mm -hmm. on-site group interview? I imagine we shouldn't have to repeat the same stuff for two rounds. Uh, I think that's a great question. But actually, so it's my, it's my personal experience. I actually didn't change the project uh, between the hiring manager population and the group population. And usually for the hiring manager population, they won't ask you to present two or three. They will just, they will ask you to talk, walk through one project briefly. And then they will, based on the project you, you showcase, they will ask you some follow-up question based on that project. And it's, and I also checking with my recruiter. So they are fine ways like presenting the same project during my previous call with high manager or senior designer or during my final like on-site interview. Um, because like definitely for the on-site interview, you will present at least two projects and different people, they like different folks, they will come into the meeting. So I think it's totally fine and always double check with the recruiter for 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 any like advice yeah yeah recruiter is friend they usually get more money yeah. if you get hired so ask yeah. them all you want yeah recruiter is not scary recruiter is friend i guess that's yeah. what the mental hurdle i had when i was studying yeah. out yeah but uh actually the other thing i want to add is especially for the hiring manager hiring manager core the portfolio presentation is kind of like informal portfolio presentation so you don't have to prepare a deck or slide to go through the portfolio patient. Sometimes they just ask you to like opening up your online portfolio and work through one project. But for me, like I always love to have a slide a deck, presentation deck ready. So whenever the hiring manager say like, okay, like we can work through one of your project on your portfolio, I will say like, would you mind I share my screen? I prepare a portfolio presentation for it. Definitely they are okay with having a portfolio presentation decks because in this format, it's easier for me to structure in a story and having having like incorporate like large, like clear visual uh, design mockup on my portfolio presentation. So definitely think about like at least prepare a presentation decks before you talking with the hiring manager. 
Yes, and while you're working through your projects, you can start collecting artifacts along the way too. So you don't have to save it to the end. I know it can be a little bit intimidating. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Our next question comes to Anonymous. Um, says, I'm doing design strategy. How did you? How do you suggest approaching this type of presentation, showcasing a case study on stakeholder management rather than design artifacts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great great question. Um, because I am the product designer, so I'm not really knowing about like what is your responsibility as a design strategy. But what I if I want to show the product, uh, like my collaboration experience or my management experience with coach functional team, I always will incorporate, I always will showing an example, showing a story during my design process to talk about, to talk about this skill set. For instance, I, uh, there's one time uh, I was working on blah, blah, products and my product, product manager sent out uh, information about there's one specific error state we need to consider. And then like a few hours later, she reached out to me for another error message. So at this moment, I was thinking that, okay, maybe we have more like error state or any other edge case we haven't considered for our project. So what I did here is I start with a, a document that I create with I call with different columns. So I identify the potential edge case and error state. And then I share this document to my PM engineer and content strategy. So we can collaborate uh, on like like my finding all these edge case for our product. So what I did here is I create a document that become a centralized place for my team to document all these edge case. And when I was handling my design with the engineer team, it's, it's also easier for an engineer to look at the, what is the error message for different use case uh, we might need to include in this product. And also this document become a template later on to be leveraged by other designer working on the same problem space. So I think that is a perfect perfect example to showcase I how I improve the team process. Um, so I always like using this more specific example and it is also a design challenge as well. Like how the I designing for the edge case. So when I talk about how I solve this design challenge, uh, design challenge at the same time, I bring this example up. I can show like design crop as well as the team collaboration skill set. Yeah, that's this one makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it's like a case study on improving processes, not necessarily yeah. product, but solving problems and making something more efficient. Yeah. Yeah. Our next question is. Oh, there's a lot of questions that I'm really also got uploaded. Um. I'm going to try to go in order as much as I can. Um, uh, quite next questions by Holly. What is the difference between the case study structure on the portfolio website and the portfolio mm -hmm. presentation on the interview? Uh -huh. Yeah, that is also a very popular question. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, I think if you ask this question to a different designer or a high manager, they might have different opinions. So my my, my opinion is that the online portfolio is just a, it's a high level uh, like gallery to showcase what kind of projects, what kind of product domain you have been working like for the past few years, especially if you are, if you are not a very junior designer, I think like online portfolio is just a gallery and show high level showcase like about the project. So make sure that you really makes the homepage easily to scan, easily to navigate, and you have a very high uh, resolution, high fidelity mockup you are using on the home screen. Because I see some of the designer, they are not using the very like low resolution or lower quality of the artifacts on their home screen. It will make the first it, will, it won't have a really great impression from the recruiter and hiring manager point. So make sure that you're really designing the homepage of your online portfolio. And for the rest of the case study, for the content itself, for me, I will write it in a very brief level, like the project, my, my role, the timeline, mm, team structure, 
um, and also point out what is the user problem or business problem I'm trying to solve. And during the iteration process, I want to tell three story or three challenge. I will just po pop up maybe one like most important like design iteration I did. Maybe there's a key iteration on the location of the search bar. I have a lot of iteration and I just show the iteration and briefly talk about my rationale and how I land on the final design. And then I will end up my case study with my uh, business outcome and maybe two or three of my learning or key takeaway. So it's pretty simple. It won't include everything um, as I was going to talk about during my portfolio presentation. So I think, so I think like for the portfolio presentation, like I mentioned in this talk, it's more like a movie, a performance, uh, and you are the hero. You need to talk and dive deep into the detail, showcase a variety of your skill set through this different story, through this different project you select into your portfolio presentation. Yeah, thank you. That was great. I know that's a really popular question there. Yeah. Yeah. Next question. I know you have a master's degree in HCI, and I feel like mm -hmm. a lot of buddies also ask about it on Discord. And next question for Anonymous is, do you feel like doing a master's program was helpful? Mm -hmm. Slash, would you recommend for someone who didn't study design in undergrad, for example, educated by a boot camp? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, also another popular question. So the first thing is depending on your learning style and like how much like how, how much support you can get from your family because first getting into the design school is very expensive. Like you need to pay like very expensive tuition and everything from the design school, like the material is very expensive. So think about like how much you really willing to pay and how much time you willing to um, contrib contribution or contributes to the one year or two year master degree. I think the, the good thing for the two years SCI program is that during the summer time, you can using your school, school project or past project to find a summer internship because a lot of my friends, they leverage the summer internship. Um, so they get the return offer at the end. So before the graduation, the life is super like easy and sure for them. So they, they can just travel around and waiting for uh, graduation and then they can go into this company. So I think that, that is one of the biggest uh, benefit. And the second benefit to get into the HCI master program is the uh, alumina resource. So I am the type of person, I don't love like networking a lot or linking. So, but when I was a student, I reached out to uh, the alumni from my master program and ask them for help, ask them feedback on my portfolio presentation, my resume and everything. And I, I think they are just super, they were super willing to help me because I'm the student from that program. Uh, but the other thing is I want to say, I think from the high manager or the recruiter or the, the interview perspective, if you already get into the interview process, what kind of degree, you got from any school doesn't really matter. It's all about yourself, like your work, your project, like how did you showcase your skill? How did you talk about the project? How did you showcase your story? Like during the real world interview. So I think once you get into the interview, it doesn't really matter. And again, like getting a master degree in SCI, it helps sometimes to get into the first door, like to get to get the first like, call from the hiring manager, but it won't influence the results. Like whether you will get hired or not, it doesn't relate to like how many degree you got. So I think going back to the initial portfolio presentation, I think it's no matter like you graduate from bootcamp or design school or other like non-design school, it's always about your skill set and your work, yeah. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I never studied design in school or went yeah. to a boot camp, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it is possible. There's like, but it also depends on your learning style as well. Mm -hmm. So what works for someone else might not work for you. So mm -hmm. yeah, um, a lot of really great questions. Um, next question from Julia. Can you give some insight on technical interview questions slash interview structure? Like maybe some types of other design interviews after you pass the portfolio presentation, like the app critique or... 
Okay. Yeah. Spread. So right. this is another topic of the talk.、Mm, yeah. So usually, like we have like whiteboard design challenge and app creativity and behavioral question. Um,、uh, and I think the app creativity is not as common as the whiteboard design challenge and behavioral question. Um. So, so for the behavioral question, definitely, uh, be prepared about a few of the story and example in advance, and most likely. They will ask you the question about how. Tell me about the time, uh, you had a conflict or disagreement with your manager, PM, or engineer. So definitely prepare at least like two example for each of the conflict or disagreement story with your team, with your code functional uh body, and for the whiteboard design challenge and app creativity. I think the essential part they want to evaluate from these two session is is also about your collaboration skill. Like they are not, it's not focusing on your final design, the final how pretty or how high quality you create. Uh, from your whiteboard design challenge, it's more about like how did you, uh, talk to the interviewer. And figure out what is the problem we need to focus in on, and always communicate and checking with the interviewer for, for to ask question or to ask for more information, and then you can make the assumption on like like who, what, and why for your whiteboard design challenge, and the same methodology. Like communicate and talking, driving the conversation, and talk to your interviewer, also applying for your app creativity. Because for the app creativity, um, like after like I give a high level overview about like what is this app is, what kind of problem this app is solving for, what is the business goal of this app, when I go into uh creativity the home screen or a specific user flow, like I always ask like my checking with my interviewer about like do you have any question here or I can move on into the next. Part because it's a two-way conversation you have with your interviewer during this kind of print、uh, during this kind of session. They are not just looking at your design craft anymore. They are looking more likely about your collaboration communication skill between、uh, during these sessions. Yeah, but it's a great question. It's a it's a it's a lot of thing we can talk about、uh, like about the app creativity or whiteboard. But yeah. To、check out Minjun's other talks on that on our YouTube channel too, if you want、yeah. to learn more. Yeah, yeah, check out other video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're almost at time. Um, we have a couple of minutes to go.、Mm-hmm. Here. We'll have like one or two more questions. Um,、yeah. and then we can do a group photo. So there's another great question from Kathleen. Is a lot of our buddies are wondering like what to include in our portfolio, and like the question is. Mm-hmm. What do you recommend having a diversity of case studies, such as one focused on user research, one on UI design, and they're on design、mm-hmm. systems, etc. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. So I think like, so I assume you are the a、uh, product design. You are applying for UX or product designer role is not UX researcher role. So in here, like, you don't have to have a one study. Only talk about the user research. I think the user research or user interview or user testing skill set should be included into your design process. Should be included in your like design project in general. So don't have one single project only talk about the user research because you are not applying for the UX research job. And so I think um let let's give. Give you a brief example. Like, let's say if you are going to prepare two project for your portfolio presentation, I will encourage you to think about like to talk, to think about what is a larger scope end to end pro- project, uh, like more complicated workflow you have been working before. I think that larger project or more complicated project should be your first project. Which means you can show a, a variety of the product design skill set, hard skill and soft skill, from the first case study, from the first project, and then from the second project, it's more flexible. Depending on maybe there's some specific skill set the team is looking for, or、uh, maybe the team is like the VR team, so you you might need to choose a project, a side project related to VR, or you want to showcase a specific. Skill set or superpower, like I'm really great at, 
uh, designing for design system. So maybe in the second project, I will focus on the UI uh, component design and design for design system. So I think that first project, it definitely should be more like full case study end to end project. And the second one could be more like a, a like, like small, like mini like case study showing a specific like two or one or two superpower you have, you haven't had chance to highlight uh, during your first project. So definitely check my peers video about the presentation on Design Body YouTube channel because I answered this question in that portfolio presentation, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Um, we're gonna do a group photo soon. And I guess our last question is one I generally like to ask is, do you have any other um, any other tips regarding like portfolio presentation or design career in general that you want to share mm -hmm. that didn't get it covered yeah. today yet? Yeah, I, so I think last thing is, I, I actually was looking at my very first portfolio presentation, like when I graduated from the school, like it just looks so bad, but eventually I, get, I got the job, I feel way more lucky. So I think like no matter what stage you are, like we always have our own like superpower and always knowing about your superpower maybe sometimes you didn't know you should ask your friend or ask your family i think always knowing about your superpower and knowing about what is my opportunity areas and need to improve because early on i know about how important the portfolio patient it is even i was doing really bad in my first couple presentation but i did spend so many time uh, sometimes I even just, I didn't sleep. I just focusing on like the visual detail of my portfolio presentation, portfolio presentation decks for my portfolio presentation slide. So I did spend so much time uh, and always looking for the feedback from my mentor, from my peer to improve the portfolio presentation. So it's a very time consuming process. It's not just like I spend a day and I don't, I, have, I will, I, I have completed the slide. So I always have a very higher standard for my design of the portfolio presentation and always think about like every detail, like how I can make the, how I can make the visual design consistent across all my slides. So I really dive deep into the detail about every of the slide I'm designing for my portfolio presentation and the results come out really well. I can use in my portfolio presentation like to, to showcase my skill set to every of my company when I was doing my interview. So definitely like, it's not a, an easy process. It's not just one day I built it and I got, got I got the job. It's a process you need to put a lot of efforts. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the journey. Yeah. 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 Definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's do a group photo now. Um, would you please stop sharing your screen? Okay. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Feel free to turn on your camera. I'll count down 10 seconds. You're welcome to grab any objects. Sometimes I have uh, a bear with me or someone's a fluffle with me. Today I'll, I'll bring on Pusheen. I will count down. I also have some other random stuff. Grab some plants, whatever you want. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming and all of y'all for answering each other's questions in the chat as well. It's always really helpful. I'd love to see buddies helping each other out. Um, I'll count down. We'll do um, a static one first and then a way for Instagram story. We like to spice things up over at Design Buddy. So we have this, this other thing we do. Um, yeah, so right. I'll count down 10 seconds and I'll take the photo. There's multiple pages, so just stay smiling for a few seconds. All right. And um, at the end, feel free to like plug all your socials as well. We just didn't want to miss any of your questions and commentary in the chat during the event. Um, but we want y'all to connect. Um, all right. Five, four, three, two, one. Smile. All the pages. Well, let's do a wave for our Instagram story. You can see this at design.buddies. We like to like spice things up, keep people on their toes, like myself. All right, ready? So you can wave, you can dance, dab, whatever you want in our little story. All right, ready, set, wave. Hello, buddies. Thank y'all for tuning into Practical Techniques to Level Your Presentation with Min Jun. Make sure to check out the recording on YouTube to learn how to level up your portfolio presentation. Cool.
So that was it. Thank you all so much for coming. Really appreciate it. Love seeing all y'all's design buddies background as well. I definitely use these backgrounds at work. You're all welcome to as well, whatever you want. Um, and that concludes our event. Make sure to hop into Discord, receive more actionable tips. And also I see y'all also plug in your links in the chat and we want all of our buddies to connect with each other. So feel free to plug away in the chat as well. Um, and I'm gonna stop live stream to YouTube. Stop live stream.